Thank you so, so much for tuning in to the Elena and Natalia show today. We're twin hosts. I'm Natalia Moranian. Hey, I'm Elena Moranian. Today we're continuing our virtual conversation yeah. with Shayla Ortiz of My Single Purpose and also of her book, Praying Through Singleness. She is joining us virtually from Atlanta, Georgia, and we are continuing our conversation on all things singleness, waiting, prayer, and even talking about the Bride of Christ and what that means in today's day and age. And so, yeah, if you miss part one, make sure to check that out as well on elenanatalia.tv slash show, and then come back and join part two because there are so much nuggets. You're going to want to just take notes and yeah. uh, pick up your Bible and also call a friend or watch with a friend, share it online. We really want you to be blessed and I know you will be. So let's join part two of our conversation with Shayla Ortiz. You mentioned so, so many PowerPoints, so many golden nuggets and power truths. Yeah, and thank you. I've read a quote somewhere where I want to marry someone I can break generational curses <laughs> with. How, and how, how. yes, we want to do that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you also said to heal from soul ties, from heal to heal from generational curses. And you mentioned witchcraft. Do you think that witchcraft or generational curses can also block someone from entering into their marital destiny? And can that be a possible reason why? someone can be single and how to know if yeah, you actually you have know? witchcraft operating in your life because to touch upon her question if let's say you are prepared you do feel like it's the right timing yes. and the season the kairos moment has arrived yet nothing's overdue or <laughs> perhaps you go from being content and single to being wow i feel like something is literally being stolen can you attribute that to witchcraft can you just expound on that Yes, I truly believe it is something that can definitely hinder you and you're doing all the right things. But when you have a spiritual attachment like that, it needs to be broken for you to be able to move forward. And the wonderful thing about walking intimately with the Lord is that the Lord highlights these things to you. And mm -hmm. if, you know, right. if, if, it, that's why it is so important to be intimate with him so that you can hear your shepherd. But right. when there's a disconnect, when you're on a different channel than he is, it's going to be, it's going to be harder to listen to him. And that's why I always tell singles that it's in, it is very important to live righteously while you wait. Uh, because Amen. if you're living righteously, then the channel is clear. The channel is clear. But I think that to know, um, for me, the Lord highlighted it to me through prayer. But I know that for some other people, perhaps going to a mentor or going to a uh, a pastor or somebody that they that they know that is really in tune with the Lord and perhaps has the the gifting of deliverance and um, they could be you know they could be told you need to be delivered from this but um, yes I mean just seek the Lord and He will uncover the things that are hidden. Amen. That is powerful. The hidden things coming to the light, the darkness being brought to the light. And like you said, it is only through pursuing righteousness and reading the word and focusing on spending time with Jesus that he will reveal attacks that are preventing blessings from coming forth. And, you know, there's a lot of singles who are waiting and contending and nothing's happening. And being that you've coached multiple singles, women specifically, like what is the number one reason you feel or perhaps you can list out any reason you feel as to what's holding them back and why they're single. Is it a lack of men pursuing? Is it the fact that, you know, there's social media, social media comparison, discontentment? What do you feel is truly at the heart of the singleness epidemic, I feel? I truly believe that we have an epidemic in social media of placing impossible expectations on our future spouse. I see, so the many, um, <laughs> I see so many encouraging ministries that they're well intended, but 
it's they set up your future spouse like a perfect individual mm. and that person does not exist that person just yeah. simply does not exist uh, marriage is hard and you marry an imperfect person and so i hear women and they're like well i want him to do this and i want him to do that i want him to be a preacher i want him to you know and it's all these things that i'm like wait a minute wait a minute you know that the lord uses marriage to refine us so he's wow. not gonna he's not gonna connect us to a perfect person a perfect person for us perhaps but an imperfect yes. person that person's gonna have flaws they're gonna have uh, issues that are going to upset you that are going to be um you, you know it's just just an imperfect yes. person that person might bring baggage from his past um if he doesn't deal with his you know, generational curses or abuse in mm -hmm. the past, that's going to come into the marriage. So you have to be spiritually sound and you have to be really connected with the Lord and have um, a, a really good foundation in the Lord. So whatever your spouse brings, you're ready to be right. that helpmate that he needs. So it's so beautiful to think that our husband's going to be this godly man, that he's never <laughs> going to, you know, he's never going to have any uh, setbacks or fall short. But that's that's really not the truth. The truth is, is that he's going to have quirky things that are going to get on your nerves <laughs> and he's oh, going to no. have setbacks. He's going, he's probably going to sin because we, it, it happens in life. I mean, when I've been married for 21 years and I, I've done things, you know, and, and it, it's, it's, we're human. Human. Yeah. We're human. We're not perfect. And I'm sure I do things my husband crazy. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I see how they set women up to yep. believe that a knight in a in a white horse is going to come for them. But no, Jesus already handled that. <laughs> Jesus already <laughs> yes, handled absolutely. that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And so I tell women to keep their expectations you know, uh, to ask the Lord for a healthy perspective, a healthy expectation, and to just be ready to have a, you know, a wonderful marriage, you know, especially if you've been praying for your, sp for your future spouse, um, you know, get ready to have a wonderful marriage, but there are challenges will arise. And, uh, but that's just part of life. And it's better to have a realistic expectation than to have this this expectation that that man is never going to be able to fulfill because that will just bring disappointment, disillusionment, and yes. perhaps even a divorce. So. Yeah. I love it to have realistic and healthy expectations for your future spouse. We always say we're not looking for, for a perfect, perfect man. man. We're looking for a man who is being perfected, perfected by and God. Only perfect yes. God. Yes. And so yes. we're not perfect. We're not expecting perfection. And to expect perfection other than Jesus Christ would be foolishness. But and I also do believe that the right marriage will truly lead the couple us. together to perfection. Like you said, like refiner's gold, that maybe alone you're not perfect, but together you are being perfected. And that is the beauty of marriage. Just and like you sometimes have to go through the fire, the trials to refine you. It has been my experience in my marriage that whenever I try to fix something in my own strength, I fail horribly. Um, but when I take it to the Lord and I, I stand on his strength, when I, you know, when I stand on his wisdom, when I stand on his knowledge, his grace, I'm able to extend that to my husband. And we've been able to overcome so many things just because of that. So I always tell the ladies that um, to extend that grace and to prayerfully stand, you know, Stead, be steadfast. Yes. Amen. All comes Amen. back to prayer once again. Yes. Yeah. Nothing is impossible for the Lord. Nothing is impossible Amen. for the Lord. Definitely. I love that. Nothing, Nothing. is impossible Nothing. for the Lord. It's so important to heal and to set realistic, healthy expectations for your future spouse. And just going on the topic of perfection, uh, many women, I feel, feel that they need to be perfect before they're deserving of a spouse. But marriage or a husband is not promised to anyone, but God's perfect will and grace is. So can you give some encouragement to some woman who may feel that, you know, they need to be perfect until 
you know, God blesses them with a future spouse, but that sometimes it's just God's grace, you know, to gift you with a spouse. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> I've had many write to me that they're scared, that they've been waiting so long that they feel that they weren't meant for marriage. But it's been my experience that the women that have been that have been called to singleness forever, the Lord is such, he's such a wonderful father. And what I've heard from these ladies that the Lord has told them that they're going to be single forever, wow. that marriage is not going to be a part of their life. And I truly believe that if that is what the Lord has uh, planned for your life, he'll let you know ahead of time. Um, and all the ladies that I've spoken that, you know, they feel marriage is not in, in the plan for their life. They say they feel an inner peace. There's no more struggle. There's no more turmoil. There's no more, you know, questioning the Lord. It's just a peace that has come over them that they have now accepted that they have been called to be single. And it's so beautiful when that peace overtakes the person because they no longer complain. They no longer question God. They've just learned yeah. to love and make him their husband. Um, mm. And so all the things that they wanted their spouse to fulfill the Lord has fulfilled in them. And so that need has just simply vanished. And wow. um, for the ladies that are afraid that, you know, that might be their lot in life, the Lord is faithful to, to yeah. let you know ahead of time. He's not going to keep you waiting for years. You know, um, he has a plan for you. He has a plan for you. Amen. And so, you know, so good. yeah, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. I truly believe that as the word says that he will give us the desires of our hearts. But before that, it says, if you delight yourself in the Lord. So if we make the Lord our delight, he will give us the desires of our hearts, whether it's singleness, whether it's marriage. I know for ourselves, it's definitely marriage. <laughs> we love our we eternal, that inner peace we love our Lord. eternal bridegroom, <laughs> yeah, Jesus, amen. but we also know that he has prepared our kingdom bridegrooms here on this earth so amen. that we can build family together and bring the heaven on earth together and kingdom couples and kingdom marriages. Kingdom marriage are so important in yeah. this world. And I know that the enemy hates, hates marriage. He hates couples, especially men and women of God who are coupled together to share the gospel and to bring the good news and who have partnered up in their mission that to bring holiness and consecration and to, as the Bible says for husbands, to wash their wives in the water of the word and for them to love their wives as Christ loved the church. And so marriage is so powerful. Can you speak on the illustration of marriage as uh, Christ loving the church? Marriage refines us. And with everything that I've been through in my marriage and being unequally yoked and seeing my husband come to the Lord, it has become so evident how I see now how the Lord um, compares marriage to the church, because it is such an unconditional love. Um, it is oh, such a yeah. patient love. It is such a um, an all encompassing love. Um, and you know how the Lord refines us go through, uh, you know, through life. It's, it's so similar to what we go through in marriage. Absolutely. Just Jesus Christ and the physical representation of the being the bride, bride of Christ, Christ and being loved as the bride of Christ and the command in the Bible for men to love their wives as Christ loved the church and even gave up his life for her. And I just think it's so powerful that the Bible also gives us specific guidelines as to how to express that. It says that men should love their wives and women should respect their husbands. And so it also talks about the needs of men to be respected mm -hmm. and women to be loved and cherished. And I know that if if that is God's perfect will for his daughters, for his sons, then he will fulfill it in his perfect will and timing. But we have to be consistent in praying through the seasons of singleness. And I love, Shayla, that yes. you have written a book called Praying Through Singleness. The cover is just so gorgeous. Um, 
It has a butterfly, butterfly and a car, a lady riding in a car, yeah, yeah. and we there. are <laughs> there. We go, and Woo. we are just such <laughs> avid fans of butterflies. butterflies. <laughs> it represents new creation. So, talk a little bit about the cover of the book and what inspired that. Clearly, we're creatives if we're going straight for the art. On <laughs> yes, <that. laughs> the book. Let's we love to see the butterfly. Too, but <laughs> about that later. <laughs> Yes, uh, Deneen, Deneen Miller, she, um, she's the one that did the cover and she's such a talented person. Uh, yes, the cover was inspired, the butterflies were for new, for birthing something new. Um, new. And, uh, and the transformation, the metamorphosis that goes from, you know, uh, a single girl to a married woman. Oh, and I love that. Uh, I didn't think the of that. Car, I know. Wow. <laughs> I just thought of, oh, I get butterflies. I have a crush. <laughs> <laughs> it's something different, yes. right? And, and then the 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 car is just how, you know, the single woman is independent and she's on mm -hmm. the go and you know, she's <laughs> waiting on God, but her life is not on hold. I love oh, that. You're waiting wow. on God, but your life is it's not, not on hold. She's not putting the brakes on life. She's pushing the pedal. pedal. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Ex that's I love why. It. That's guiding. why her. That's why. Yeah. That's why her scarf is flowing because yes, she's on I the go. It. Yes. Oh, yeah. She is on the go. <laughs> that is so prophetic. Such a prophetic picture. On the go. On the go. Spreading the gospel. Spreading the gospel. Put the go and gospel. Go gospel. A guided prayer journal for young women. And we had the absolute honor to write an endorsement for your book. And I actually like to read it. Yeah. I like to read it because. You know, when we first got praying through singleness, it's like a 10 week uh, journey of journaling, praying mm -hmm. through impending. So I'll just officially read the endorsement because uh, this is how we truly feel about praying through singleness. Praying through singleness is an invaluable prayer journal that guides Christian single women to fix their eyes on their eternal Prince, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you want to continue? The yeah, next? sure. This relationship <laughs> resource inclines your spiritual ears to hear the heart of the Father while encouraging you to share your heart's desires mm -hmm. with the Father. You will be emboldened to both practically, practically. and prophetically pen down, down pray, pray into, into prepare, prepare for, for, and proclaim, proclaim God's promises over every single step of your life. We did that intentionally. Yes. Every single step every single of your life. <laughs> yes. For praying through singleness. So yes. we are going through right. this journey together. And like we said, if God put that desire on our hearts, any single watching that, you know, you can pray through it. And it's practically, and I would say probably the most beautiful time of your life when you're able to have that alone time with the Lord, you and the Father to be able to really prophetically and practically pen down and write. So tell us more about what inspired you to write Praying Through Singleness, being that you already had a spiritually single and my single purpose ministry. And um, what led you and prompted you to um, put this journal together for young single women? And possibly any single, you know, watching this right now. Yes, definitely. At first, it was written for young singles, but I had older women writing to me saying that, you know, it had been a blessing to them as well as divorced women waiting on God once more. Um, and what encouraged me to write this book was hearing from so many single women that didn't know how to pray. They would always approach me, well, how do I pray? What do I say to the Lord regarding my future spouse? And I would always come back to them and I was like, you know, it's wonderful to pray for your future spouse, but you need to pray for your spiritual life, to pray yeah. for mm -hmm. the things that, you know, need to change in you and the growth that needs to take place while you're waiting. And uh, I got so many that I was like, hmm. Maybe I need to. And the Lord started putting that desire in my heart. I was scared at first because I write on social media, but it's a totally different thing to be an author. And right. uh, but, you know, the Lord walked me through it and um, he started, uh, you know, giving me ideas and just one thing led to another. And so the book came out. It did. It's so practical, tangible. I love yes. that I can write down my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I can write down my prayers. And instead of, you know, having an empty journal, you have a guided journal to basically lead you. So it leads to like, for instance, I just randomly opened to day 23. There is a my life section with a little devotional. And then there's a key verse and prayer key points. And then it says, God spoke to my heart 
dot, dot, dot. And you can write down your, what God is speaking to your heart and my thoughts section as well. And it just really is a 10 week journey to guide you, to prepare, to pray into, and to pray over singleness. So definitely if you have, if you're single watching this or know any singles, I would definitely recommend this book. It has our endorsement from Miss Shayla Ortiz as she put her heart and soul into it and I know has prayed countless prayers over each one and every single person who picks up this book, including ourselves. Absolutely. I know that for sure. Absolutely. And you mentioned social media. You have just such a big social media yes. platform and you are using it so beautifully, so prophetically to write down your thoughts and to encourage. And we you follow are. you on my single purpose, the Facebook page. It was page. in 2016 yes. when we first connected. Yeah. I and I believe you, you shared one done, of yeah. our posts yes. on waiting. That's and that you said yes. that someone shared your post. I'm like, wow, she did that for us. And we yes. gained a few followers <laughs> as well. Yeah. It's just full circle. So thank Beautiful. you for that. Thank and I you. love how you use your big platform to just be faithful to the message and spreading the gospel and the good news. And you encourage us so much with what you share, what what prophetic encouragement yes, and words the, the Lord gives you. And you, um, from April 29th, from your Facebook page, I'd like to share, you wrote, the wait is making you doubt what was promised, but mm -hmm. understand that as you're waiting, God is training you yep. to hear his voice and adhere to his commands breaking you to yield, surrender, and align. He is tuning your ears. Interesting. We were having some audio issues today, but he and is- tune up cars. <laughs> yeah, car tune-ups. <laughs> he is tuning your ears to know his voice and obey it, to focus only on him, no matter the epic destructions surrounding you. So don't grumble or despise having to wait. So that is so There's a important. divine purpose. Yes, there is a divine yes, purpose. Absolutely. There's a time and season to everything, to singleness or to marriage. And like you're saying, there's struggles, joys and challenges, but as long as we're in God's perfect will to surrender, you know, our permissive will, our desires, our wants, and say, God, I want only what you want for me, who you have for me. We no longer limit God or put him in a box as to what kind of person he can bring. And in fact, if we do that, we might just be so blown away because he can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask, dream, or imagine. So just, I believe there's so much power in throwing out our own limits and going outside of the box and really just trusting in the Lord. Yeah, so we just want to open this time yes. for you to just share any prophetic words or uh, nudges that God has in your heart to encourage anyone watching. Yeah. I know we've been talking about the subject of singleness and waiting and even unequally yoked partnerships, but if you have any inclinations or nudges that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, we just want to give you the platform to feel free to share and even to pray over anyone watching. Thank you. Yes, I think that, um, well, what I would like to tell the single community is that view singleness as a blessing um, and use this time wisely. Um, even though you're waiting, waiting sounds like something that you sit and do nothing. You just wait until the answer pops into your lap, like the, the guy appears. <laughs> but waiting mm -hmm, yeah. with expectation changes things because you're expecting God to answer. Therefore, you don't just have to wait and do nothing. You are waiting with a purpose. And I think it is very important like, you know, the cover, the girl's in the car and she's on the go, for you to don't lose yourself in the wait. Find yourself in the wait, but through the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, ask him to give you his eyes to see you, to see where your mm -hmm. life is heading, um, to show you the things that need to change, the things that need to be purged, the people in your life that need to be, uh, you know, that you need to let go of, all the things that uh, perhaps are hindering you to be the spouse that perhaps your spouse is praying for. Because if you're praying for a godly man, then you better believe he's probably praying for a godly woman. You know, when people buy my book, I tell them this isn't a feel good. Um, it's not a feel good self-help book. No, it's a book that's going to make you um, look deep inside of you and ask the Lord to search your heart. And so this is a time to do that. This is a time to actually 
be on your knees and seek the Lord with hunger, seek the Lord passionately, and actually take him on as your husband. Um, mm -hmm. And allow him, allow him to grow you, allow him to change you, allow him to fill you. And you're going to see so many beautiful things being birthed that you're not even going to notice time passing. You're going to be wow. so focused on him. And he's going to give you so much joy and so much peace that when your spouse comes along, you're going to be like, Oh my goodness, I this is amazing. It's when I least expected it. I think that sometimes women are so focused on meeting the the their spouse that um they they lose track. They lose track of what's important. And I think that, you know, when you're too focused on something, the wait seems long. But when you're mm -hmm. focused on the king, the wait is really going to seem, you know, like it's not long at all and like it was mm -hmm. worth it. I wish Amen. I would have had somebody telling me this advice when mm. I was single. Thank you for sharing <laughs> so, it with everyone now. Thank you. Yes, you're so faithful to God's call to encourage his yeah. single daughters and sons. And uh, as we wait yes. on him, capital H, not him, lowercase h. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's all about that. Amen. And also yes. another prophetic encouragement just to close the show yes. from your Facebook page. It just really stuck out to us, especially from since we've been talking purpose. about, yeah. you know, for such a time as this, I feel that the Lord allowed this interview to happen. And you praise, praise yeah. God. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Finally yeah. happened. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yay. And from your My Single Purpose page, you posted something about time to shine. You know, you said you took a picture from your car. So oh, it, it's, car. it's interesting it's that this <laughs> has a car. <laughs> put a picture up. Yeah, we'll don't care put if the it's picture. blurry, but we want to show it. Uh, but you said that when you saw this specific sign, you felt your spirit leap within you yes. and you felt the Holy Spirit say, the ones who have been hidden are about to be activated and let out of their hidden place for yes. such a time as this. Hallelujah. All the preparation, Ooh. all the training, all the pain and the weight has a divine purpose. So get ready, my friend. Your season to shine is coming soon. And the picture you Amen. took had a time to shine. Coming soon. Coming soon. So that means something good is on the coming horizon. Coming soon. After every Absolutely. storm, there's a rainbow. Like if we're losing hope, keep on looking towards the rainbow of hope, the promises of God. I, It's time to shine. People are coming out of their hiddenness. No more demonic hiddenness or being invisible. And Elena mm -hmm. always says something that I love, which yeah. maybe this is proper way to conclude as yeah, well. I always say, you know, I'd rather be invisible oh. to all the wrong men if it means that I'm going to be seen yes, by my does. right one. The one. I only need yeah. the one. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> and Absolutely. I am waiting for him. And I know that in God in his perfect timing will fulfill it. But in the yeah. meantime, and he is faithful. And until fulfill. I meet him and w when I'm with him, I will continue sharing the good news and the gospel. Amen. And blessed is yeah. she who believed that he would will fulfill, fulfill his, his promises. promises to her. Amen. Blessed is that person. So Amen. thank you. You are such a blessing your joy. to our lives, your ministry. I know your husband is blessed to have you. Your three yes. wonderful children. <laughs> uh, the a wonderful single woman that you coach and mentor. You are a blessing and I am just thank so you. honored to have had your time with us here on the Alana and Natalia thank you. show. Thank you so much and you're welcome back anytime. There's any prophetic nudges or anything you want to share with our viewers, you know, this platform is yours. Thank you so much. It was an honor being here with you guys. And uh, I've been following you for so long. I'm a little starstruck. But uh, oh, <laughs> thank you very much. We are. We are. <laughs> There's stars behind you. Oh, God bless yeah. America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. You Aww. shine bright. You literally keep on shine shining like a light in the darkness and yeah. never Amen. lose that passion. Amen. Keep on fighting faithfully and standing in the gap. There are countless lives touched because of your faithfulness. Thank yeah. you so much thank and you. for being so gracious. So yeah, I don't know what you. time it is now. And I know you're in Atlanta. Track of time. <laughs> so it's probably yes. almost 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock yeah. there. But thank, thank you for you. your graciousness and you're have a welcome. good evening. And we'll and talk we'll soon. Chat soon. Thank Absolutely. you. Bye. God bless you. Bye-bye.